Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Sanako webinar. Today's topic is how ISCAP uses Sanako for interpreting, training, and language teaching. Before we begin, some practicalities. The webinar will be recorded and published on Sanako's YouTube, and it will be shared with all participants through email as well. Attendees will be muted by default and can only ask questions through the question and answer function or Zoom's chat. At the end, we'll have five to 10 minutes Q&A session after Pedro's presentation. Briefly about Sanako. Our mission is to help schools and universities to provide the best quality second language education with minimal effort. We are a Finnish educational technology company and our solutions are used in over 114 countries and over 50,000 classrooms worldwide. We have satisfied customers on five different continents and every week roughly 6 million individuals are getting better education by using Sanako language teaching solutions. Our customers include national governments, ministries of education, and many of the leading education institutions in the world, as well as smaller institutions. I will now introduce our two speakers for today. Our keynote speaker is Pedro Duarte. He's an invited senior lecturer at ISCAP, teaching subjects in the field of translation, localization, language interpretation, and ESL. Master in Specialized Translation and Interpreting by ISCAP, Pedro Duarte was awarded the Professional Qualification of Specialist in Interpretation. He is the head of the Audiovisual and Multimedia Department of ISCAP and works as a professional translator and interpreter. His main research interests are computer-assisted translation, interpreting studies, localization, re-speaking, and live subtitling. Along with Pedro, we have Teresa Patako. Teresa started as an English language tutor in vocational courses in 1994 and has been teaching English for specific purposes in polytechnic higher education undergraduate degrees since 1997. In areas closely linked to the service sector, as is the case of tourism and hospitality management, and as technical as food engineering and product design. As her educational path included a BA with honors in modern languages and literatures with major in translation, she has always been quite interested in the relationship between technology and language learning and communication. Pedro and Teresa, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you and uh, hello everyone. Uh, beforehand, I would like to, to ask you, Alexis, if you could um, promote uh, as a speaker the user Manuel Silva. I think he's online already. And uh, while you do that, I would explain because why uh, I would like to give the floor to, to Manuel Silva. Manuel Silva has actually been, well, my direct boss for almost 20 years now. And um, all my experience, uh, my practical experience with Sanako tools, which I'm going to, to talk about in this session, um, as uh, I've been dealing with Manuel uh, for these uh, past 20 years, and he's been the one, has been the one responsible for the implementation of Sanako tools in uh, ISCAP and the Porto Polytechnic. Um, so um, I, th I see that he is now online, and he, in fact, he is not uh, he is not here fully present because he's in Cyprus actually in, on on a mission for as right now, and he's the dean um, of ISCAP, so he took on other responsibilities in terms of management. Uh, but anyway, I would like to give him the floor for a few minutes uh, so that he can talk a little bit. It's easier to make it this way as he, he won't be able to be uh, throughout the whole session. I don't know if you can hear us and if you can speak. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Good. Yes. And uh, I hope you can see me, but I don't, I'm not sure if that's the case. So very quickly, no, thank you, Pedro. No. no, that's not possible. I would like it to happen, but there's something here. I, I think it's uh, a problem. Uh, but yeah, can you, you see can... me now? 
No, no, there's an issue with the cameras for other speakers. So only me and Teresa, okay. we are going to be allowed to okay. be seen. So very quickly, um, uh, then thank you, Pedro, for this presentation. And thank you, Sanako, for this opportunity. Um, very briefly, um, as Dean of SCAP and as former coordinator of Pedro and all the language labs, I would like to say that this partnership has uh, lasted for more than 20 years. And Sarnaco has allowed us to grow in quite a lot of dimensions. We could, by using their software and their hardware, experiment in different directions, not just in uh, language teaching, but also in other areas. We could use the, the, the support of Sanaku uh, to promote our research, and we could use it also to train our teachers and train other teachers from Portugal and from other language centers around the world, as we are part of an European association dedicated to language centers. Um, Sanaku itself was always our, let's say, tool that pushed us ahead and uh, allowed our teachers to create, to be different, to have, uh, to integrate new knowledge and also to experiment. Uh, I would say we, we transformed the, the language uh, teaching into a language lab and then into a, a world of exper experiments. Um, this allowed us also to create, uh, uh, I would say, a, a path that is different, is more secure, because as uh, we partner with Sanaku, we know that we have the right support and we can build the right teams and we'll have the right training. And not Well, I, I'll take the floor because I think we lost uh, Manuel. Uh, he's, uh, he was uh, in the streets uh, in Cyprus uh, working on a project, so that's that's why he may uh, he might have had some issues with his internet connection. So, um, following his words, I would like also to thank Sanako for the for the invitation and for for allowing us to share a little bit of our experience. And uh, without further ado, I have uh, just a, a small presentation to allow me to um, well to have some guidelines in order while I I speak with you while I share. Uh, some experience uh, with you and um, the thing is that um, Sanako uh, is has been a part of Ishkap for many years as Manuel said uh, and of our language teaching and uh, let me just uh, tell you that I'm going to try uh, to present uh, to introduce you to Ishkap to the school to what we do what we normally uh, our main characteristics of the school uh, talk about uh, what uh, what what is the role of languages here and uh, some history because as Manuel just mentioned uh, we have uh, been working with Sanako tools for over 20 years now so uh, and uh, now um, with study 1200, what we have been doing uh, in terms of class management, language teaching, interpretation, and uh, uh, oral assessment or testing with languages. The um, Porto uh, Accounting and Business School, let me show you what are our main um, degrees, the main degrees that we have between undergraduates and mark and master's degrees. Um, the school has more master degrees than the ones that I've listed here, and I've listed them just to show you that we are a business school. So it's uh, you can see that uh, in the undergraduate degree you have um, translation as one of the courses, so in administrative assistance and translation, and also um, a course on specialized uh, master's degree uh, on specialized translation and uh, interpreting. Um, but uh, as you can see, everything else has to do with marketing, human resources, international trade, etc. We have uh, in the school more degrees than the ones have, I've listed, as I said, and we have also the post-secondary uh, courses, which are the higher technician professional courses, I believe that's the English um, name for that. And well, generally speaking, the school has around 5,000 students. Um, but the thing is, after uh, looking at these uh, degrees that you can see here on this list, uh, why languages? So why uh, is uh, why are languages 
uh, relevant in this case and why do we have language labs the thing is that uh, languages are a part of business and that has always been the focus in the school uh, as to um, putting our students to work let's say we are preparing students for the labor market which means that they are um, being prepared um, in all levels of the labor market and one of them is speaking languages we are a small country uh, in the uh, in the corner a little corner of Europe so we are always facing the trade and facing the economy uh, with a look to other countries so that's why uh, speaking languages has been always important and now more than ever we, when we are so dependent on tourism and then when I give the floor to Teresa she can talk a little bit more about that because her school is uh, specialized in the field of um, of tourism and now just to give you a, a brief overview of um, our history we our experience with Sanako this is actually the the class you can see in this picture is student is of students uh the beginning of the century <laughs> let's say is uh, taking their uh, in their interpreting classes using a lab which is the IS9 lab still under the Tandberg name but um, we can see that uh, all the the I don't know I'm not the person to talk uh, really about the, the how it evolved in terms of the company and in terms of the business uh, of Sanako but what I know is that uh, if you look at these labs that we used then and if you look at the tools that Sanako has now you can see that there is um, there is a, a guideline there is a continue it is a continuation of what was done in i believe these labs are from the maybe the late 70s early 80s or so um the school um, the school brought them from another from the the previous facilities that uh, ishkap was established uh, in uh, in porto um, up until 90 something the mid 90s um and this is very interesting what you see here for those who never uh, saw these labs and if you know Sanako uh, Sanako's tools uh, you, what you have here and you can see it is uh, the students with a cassette a recorder tape recorder that would record on both uh, on both sides of the the, the tape so they would uh, uh, record two tracks at the same time the teacher and the student the same thing that you currently have with the student app for for the uh, for students to record the teacher and the student so it would work the same way with two uh, knobs for the for controlling the volume with all the play stop uh, recap all the the basic tools that you can find now in the digital um, recorders uh, this is the IS9 console. I actually took these pictures this morning because the, this console is in the um, in our library as well as a, a sort of a museum, let's say, for people to check it out. And this is the the teacher console, and uh, we can see uh, that the teacher has the same kind of control. The, of course, the the media sources, as you can see here, you have the the radio the 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 tape reel and the vinyl records but still the the um, the sources are not quite the same that we are used to right now but still I, I find it interesting to to look at it and to understand and on a side note let me tell you that this is um this is something that was very nice to work with uh, the sound quality was great for analog sound, of course. But and it uh, an amazing thing is that whenever something would go wrong in terms of the technology, in terms of electronics, you would smell it, literally smell it, and then change the fuse, and you're good to go. Uh, there you go with the class, no no big interruptions, everything works um, would work just fine. 
these are some other tools. These, uh, I must confess that I didn't see this being used uh, in my day. So this was, um, from what I understand, it was, uh, um, let's say, oh, I, I'm, I, I'm missing the word. So it was a, a detachable, let's say, lab, a lab that, you, a portable, that was the word, a portable lab that you could use and train students in um, other places other than the lab so and some um, educational tools that we had and we could um, use with our students then uh, the labs evolved this is actually a picture of the lab i'm in right now so we evolved as we started using still with the the tanberg icm and classnet software I believe so these labs became um, still not under the name of Sanaco but uh, exactly the same and with all um, all the tools that you had in the previous labs you had it, the potential of video so you would have the same thing the video and all the multimedia resources that you can have in a computer um, and when dealing with videos, of course, we are talking about dealing with also VHS and DVDs through um, the, um, to the, the to the through the TV cards that were inserted in every student station. Well, just a little bit of nostalgia. That's me taking a class, a subtitling class back in 2004 so my experience using these labs is just uh, is not just as a, um, a, a manager or a, a technician or whatever so i took it i took it all so i i had the experience of studying under the sanaco tools and there's a proof of that you cannot see the face but believe me that that is me so uh, I couldn't find, actually, I was looking for images of the, the Sanako, of the, um, of the ICM um, software, but you can see that it is the, the, basically the, the origin of Sanako Lab 300, which is one of the ones that I'm going to present then. Um, and it is uh, an evolution. This is the, the, um, the picture. I couldn't find pictures of uh, it being used. So this is a picture of the manual that we have still uh, here um, in, our, in our archives, let's say. Um, and the IS-9 labs became, we transformed them into Sanako Lab 100. So uh, the same furniture, we kept the furniture, but you can see here that we have digital recorders and the teacher station, the teacher console uh, became, well, became a, a computer and attached to all the, the rest of the hardware uh, of Sanako Lab 100. And the same way, uh, Tanberg ICM became um, Lab 300. So um, we worked for many years with Lab 300, and we still uh, actually work. Um, uh, it is more dependent on hardware, of course, but we have still three functioning functioning labs. Uh, we have two. We are struggling a little bit on making them work with some of the most current uh, operative systems, but we manage uh, and we have them working. I won't say fully because some functionality is due to this evolution in terms of the, the operative system um, will prevent us from using all the, the potential, but the basic features and the main features uh, are all there still working. Um, we had around 2005, our first experience with study 500 also, and um, used the, in, this in this case in the marketing lab. And finally, we got to uh, study 1200, which is the, well, the, the star of this, uh, of this webinar, and I will talk about it uh, in a minute. Um, let me just show you for those who don't know the previous version. So let me just show you the, these are not very good pictures. I'm not very good at taking pictures. They are only for reference, but these, these are some of the cables and some of the, the hardware that was involved with, um, just some, because, uh, part of it had already been taken out, but some of the hardware necessary for the previous versions of, um, of the Sanako tools. Um, 
most of the electronics is, are still here under this table, but um, all the cables, everything was taken out because now actually with Sanako uh, 1200, what we do have here is a lab that allows us to do all that we could do um, with the previous versions and much more uh using just uh well just the the basic hardware of a lab so computers um and screens and uh, and the necessary um, accessories and a network connection so um and of course these the these uh sanako headsets the the other day i was talking with uh, with people from sanako with you in this case and uh, we were talking about the fact that i still have many of these headsets that have been here for over 25 30 years still working fine so it depends on that they get they get a little bit um well they they get a, the the things are not as comfortable on your ears sometimes but still working very well and uh, they are quite uh, quite resistant i must say because we use them uh, a lot as for um, the use we make of uh, Stanakos uh, 1200, I, as an interpreting teacher, my go-to uh, activity with Stanako is the model imitation, which allows me to uh, broadcast my voice uh, the, the, or, or broadcast whatever uh, media source that I want to use to my students so they can do simultaneous interpretation or consecutive but uh we focus uh, on in my case i fo focus much more on um, on simultaneous but still you have uh, a great set of tools for starting with for with class management i would say that's one of the things that i've been that i've been talking about to my colleagues to other teachers in other schools all the things that you see um, in the menu on your left, all these tools of PC control, of talking, of the homework feature, etc. They are all great for you to uh, manage a class all uh, and doing things that you could do using other separate tools, but you can do it in an integrated manner within the lab. So you are, in fact, in control. That's one of the things that I normally, when I talk about what Sanako is, for those who don't know it, uh, the first feature that comes to mind is the fact that you are in control of your class. So you are in control of what your students do. So with the PC control and the screen control features, you are in control of what your students can and cannot do. You can talk to them individually or divide them by groups and without interrupting other students, talk to, to a specific student or a specific group, which is also a very nice feature. Normally you have a big classroom. Uh, in this case, we have 25 students in this uh, lab. So if you want to talk to student number 25 over there, you don't really need to interrupt the other people's work or or their activities um, in order to talk to that student and to um, work with the student. Um, what what can I tell you? So for for other activities that we have, so they, they are very useful, um, and we have been working on that um, with that uh, many times. Uh, they have to do with using. Uh, the phone conversation, for example, or group discussion, where students are many times inhibited uh, from speaking with other colleagues, uh, or even with their colleagues, I mean, and especially facing the teacher. And when you put them into groups or when you pair them and they can work um, into the recorder, they are much more at ease to speak and to um and to feel free to expand their uh, language skills, their speaking skills, without getting that pressure of being uh, in face of the, the class. Uh, and the, the fact that they are much more um, technology oriented, maybe, um, will allow them to um, really uh, expand on their potentials. That's 
the, will allow them to do things that they wouldn't do otherwise. They wouldn't do facing um, their colleagues and uh, and the, the classroom in general. Uh, and for the teacher, there's a, the great advantage that everything is re can be recorded. As uh, once again, the teacher is on under uh, is completely controlling the class, so it's controlling the activities. The teacher can record the students, can collect their their work, can always have some. In some cases, for some activities, they can. Or the teacher can even have a report on what happened. So there is, in fact, the, the students will feel free. But at the same time, they know that they are being, they can be assessed at any moment, they can be, uh, the their job can be, their work can be controlled and can be verified by the teacher. So there is a mix of um, freedom and control, I think, that is uh, quite interesting for for us. Um, in, the, in my case, uh, as an interpreting teacher, and for language teachers, um, for language teachers as well. Um, so, and uh, you, see, you see here that there is the function of chat. I'm not using actually a demonstration because I think that's not the point of this seminar, but we can use, for example, things such as the chat to allow students to do the same thing, but um but for written exercises so you can put them uh you need them to write uh, um or to this to have a discussion or to uh, do whatever kind of writing exercise but they are not that into it but if you put them into groups and ask them to discuss within a group uh a certain topic for sure that will work better than having each student individually writing uh, in their notebooks or in their um, computers. So, uh, well, now I think I will give the floor to, to Teresa and um, for, for now I will give her the floor because uh, I think she has more of an insight. I didn't uh, talk about uh, something that we do as well, that is oral assessment, but she will talk a little bit more about it, I believe. Okay, so I will stop. Let me stop sharing my screen. Uh, okay, there you go. So. Okay, Pedro, thank you very much. And um, thank you very much, Sanak, for this wonderful opportunity. Pedro, thank you for the, the trip down memory lane. It was it was uh, good to remember how things were back in the, the other century <laughs> when we started teaching, not you, but me. And uh, my perspective, just as Peter was telling you, is is a little bit different uh, in the sense that when I started working with uh, with with this software, I was lucky enough to be introduced to it by by Pedro and, and Manuel uh, when I started uh, teaching at at Schab because the school that I was working uh, went before uh, had nothing nothing that had uh, nothing to do with software. So for us, it was strictly blackboard. Believe it or not, still blackboard pen and paper and that was it so uh, that, that for me the, the opportunity to, to it was an opportunity to grow uh in terms of uh what I could do with my with my teaching and what I could do for my students um and apart from the the experience that I had at Schkap, uh not only teaching language classes but also in interpreting uh it was definitely uh, uh, something uh that made me look at the way uh, I could help my teachers in a totally different way. And now that I'm working at the School of Hospitality and Management and, and, uh, and Tourism in, um, in uh, part of the Polytechnic of Porto, I get another perspective, still another perspective from, from Sanaco because actually my colleagues and I were actually begging for uh, uh, this type of software uh, for, for to be given the, the chance of having um, a lab for our language classes. And finally, after 10 years of bagging, we were lucky enough to, to be given uh, one such lab. And we have 18 computers plus the, 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 the teacher station. And for us, it was a very, very uh, big opportunity in terms of time saving, uh, not just because we could finally help our students that are uh, uh, preparing to work in a service sector of tourism and uh, hospitality, but also because it saves us a lot of time in terms of assessments. And um, the reason is that for us, in terms of uh, uh, final exams, our final exams are divided into, into two parts, uh, written exam and uh, the, the speaking exam, the oral exam. 
And from the moment we uh, started uh, working with, with the Sun Echo software, uh, that meant that we could save something like three to four days just doing oral exams. Why? Because finally we can organize our 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 students and they actually sit the oral exams in front of a computer. And I can tell you that in just the space of two semesters, we went from having students who did not know how to say the undergraduate degree they are in in English, uh, first year students, obviously, to students that know now that I will be speaking to a computer software, so I have to be prepared because the teacher <laughs> will not help me. They have, they actually know that the perspective is totally different from the time when we had a, a three member jury panel that would ask them questions and they got used to the, the idea that the, obviously the, the teachers would always help them with this word or the other word that they could not remember, no matter how important those words were. Uh, and now that they have to sit in front of the, the computer and actually uh, produce speech, things of uh, their, their approach to the way they have to learn and how much they should invest and how much they should prepare, that, that has totally changed. So for us, it was a, a very good, uh, a very good uh, opportunity, and especially for our students, because even though my classes are a little bit too big to use the to always use the, the our our lab, uh, I have a colleague who teaches French, and she uh, she as uh, she uses the lab as much as she can with Sanako because her students are actually A one level. So she tells me that that gives her the hypothesis of actually working from with them. And because they are uh, very self-aware, uh, because they don't know that much French, uh, uh, it, it, it gives her the opportunity to actually um, show them that they can learn on their own and actually uh, uh, communicate with the teachers, with the teacher without the, the colleagues hearing them. So Obviously, it avoids the the self the the self awareness of oh I'm saying something wrong and my and my colleagues will make fun of me. So all of these are very wonderful um, opportunities that the, the, this software gives us to deal with all of the all of the issues that we have to deal when we are when we are teaching uh, young learners or uh, young um, young um, adults. And I can tell you that for us in the School of uh, Hospitality and Tourism, this experience, uh, we are having it, Pedro, we were lucky enough to have Pedro as a, uh, as our as our trainer and uh, actually always gives us the support that whenever we, oh, what can I do with this or what can I do with the other, the other feature, the other feature in the software. So it's for us, it has nothing but positives, but positives. So uh, it's a very wonderful experience. So Pedro, again, thank you very much for everything you have done for us and for the opportunity of working with, with the software. Yeah, and uh, you were just mentioning the thing of uh, preparing exercises. It's one of the things that I've been doing uh, both uh, with uh, with uh, the School of uh, Hospitality and Tourism, but also in uh, a couple of schools that asked that uh, have uh, that use Sanaco and asked for some training as well. The thing is, you have a lot of potential. We haven't been we haven't gone through in this session through the. Um, the different potential because I, I think that's not uh, we, we couldn't we could not do that and that there is people at Sanaco that are, are much better at exploring the tool but still um, the tool has a lot of potential has a lot of features that allow teachers to think or in my case when I try to provide some training I try to open hypotheses to exercises or activities that you can do with the tool um, exploring its different features because I can use uh, the chat for one purpose and someone can use the chat for a different purpose. And uh, we even have, as I told you, the, the control of the classroom is even good, even for people who don't teach languages, they enjoy using the lab for the purpose of classroom management, for example, for managing exercises, you, not only for um, language teaching or foreign language teaching um, in our case. Um, then it will all depend on 
what are what are which are your goals and uh, despite the fact that Sanako has also some uh, content uh, that is provided with uh, or for um, Sanako study uh, 1200 the thing the fact that you have uh, these features uh, and then you can create your own um, activities or prepare your own activities is very interesting and it allows you to expand on uh, on a lot of um, situations and yes, uh, yeah go you're right because uh, as i was telling you that that uh, that colleague of mine that uh, that's uh, teaching french she has exactly that, that the, the perspective that you are talking about, which is she creates her contents and then she uses the, the, the Sanako 12, 1200 to actually control what students are doing with the content she creates. Obviously, because she wants to make sure that they are not using the computer to do whatever that they want to do in whatever social platform, but they are actually doing doing the the getting the job done, and that is quite important. And because we had to deal with that during the the, the, the lockdowns because of COVID, you now we know exactly how important it is to actually be able to control your classroom, which is always a very, a very big, a very big issue, right? Because if, if, if you are not, are not keeping your students interested, they will be checking whatever, whatever is happening on TikTok or whatever. And so the fact that actually you have them for 90 minutes inside a room in which actually they are concentrating because they cannot <laughs> do anything else apart from actually working on the tasks that they are given is definitely a very big a very big plus because we no longer have to to be competing with whatever is happening outside of the classroom for their attention so definitely a very very big plus yeah and i i think it is um it is interesting that the fact of the I, I think I see it both ways. You can um, control, but at the same time you can engage students. Especially we are dealing uh, both Teresa and I. We deal with adults. Well, let's adultish students. Let's say. Uh, but still, when you are talking about young children, for example, uh, from secondary school or from seventh, eighth, ninth grade, um, we do, and we have some schools here in Portugal using Sanaco. Um, the, the teachers, the feedback that some teachers <laughs> give me after uh, after the the training sessions is that when they ever, whenever they use the tool, students uh, are much more concentrated in the activities because they are more keen on using. Um, on using the computer for that. So if you, instead of um, preventing them from using the computer, you put the computer uh, and the lab uh, uh, as a tool and they prefer it um, and they will be speaking and writing in a more, um, let's say, uh, in a more engaged way and they will have some fun. We can make them have some fun, so they are practical classes, and they are uh, they there's always that engagement that can improve with um, with uh, with that. There is a question that I see here. I'm reading which tool they use to create their own content. Uh, well, this is uh, that was what Teresa was saying, but I think that the content can be whatever whatever thing you are i'm not talking about the con the specific content that you can use that comes with st study 1200 the the created features you have a demo with the study and you can purchase and alexis can talk about that um and there are more, there is more content to be used but still you can use any any type of exercise sanako will be useful to manage the those activities and I, I can add, Pedro, to, 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 that, to, to your answer that, that the, the colleague in question uses uh, uh, all of the tools that are made available by the Moodle platform. And then she integrates whatever type of exercise she creates from reading, speaking, reading comprehension, videos, um, modeling, uh, modeling exercises, and, and, and sometimes even telephone, telephone conversations, which are very, very useful for us that need to be training uh, people that will be working in the, in, the, in the service sector. And she integrates all of those uh, without any problems 
by using the by using the 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 Sanako 1200s. Mm -hmm. So that's how she does it. I, I I don't use it as often because as I told you, my classes are too big, so I don't have enough room for all of my students. But because she uh, her, her the stum, the number of her students are around 12 to 15. So for us, for her, that is very, very useful. And she integrates all of the all of the um, all of the exercises she creates using the Moodle platform into the the Sanako uh, um, lab. Let me just share the the my email address. I, I don't know if I can add uh, anything else, but uh, uh, feel free to to reach out if you find it. That that was my last slide before. I didn't want to put in the last slide before giving the floor to Teresa. But uh, this is uh, my email address, just for anyone if you want to uh, reach out for some reason or whatever. I can help within within reason i will do it so um alexis i don't know if we are if we have questions if there is any how are we yeah. thank you thank you pedro and teresa for uh, a great presentation so everyone in the audience now would be a great time to ask any questions while we have the two specialists here from my side i'd like to start with a question Having used so many different iterations of technology, in your opinion, how do you see the future of translation studies technology-wise? It's a very broad question. So, Well, it is. Well, I, I think that technology, well, my, my first thing is that technology-wise things will evolve and we will adapt. That's that's my thing. So I've I've been working. Uh, I when you mentioned my in my introduction, you mentioned the fact of respeaking and um, and live subtitling is something that I'm working with now, starting my my PhD. And uh, when I was talking to my supervisor, he asked me more or less the same question uh, in terms of the fact that that as that will always the the research that you do in terms of technology and the use of technology will always um, involve change. Um, and the thing for me, I, I like being involved with the process of uh, that evolution in technology because that will allow me to have a say on that matter. So uh, I, I'm uh, in terms of, for example, re-speaking and live subtitling, that will change a little bit the work of interpreters uh, subtitle it's not the same thing but still it will involve some it might change the fact in some of the cases so but the thing is you cannot hide from technology you technology is there you have now all this fuss about chat gpt and uh, and ai uh, and well it's there so it's much better to look at it with uh, as a tool and try to take the best out of it and without well meant manage it in the in the best way possible rather than uh hide from it and uh, and um, and try to be um, and try to be scared that being said where will it go i don't know but for sure but for sure we will have uh, so it's a challenge also for uh, people like you at sanako so your work you all you have always you uh, you always need to be at the edge of things because as things come about you will it will be that there will be something that will be uh, a game changer and you have to be prepared for it i i'm a, i'm a user so i'll be ready for for whatever you can create i don't know Teresa, what you think about the future <laughs> Well, my friend, <laughs> I have to say I agree with you, Peter, because I'm old enough to remember that when I started working in translation, God knows it was a long, long time ago. Uh, actually, I had some customers who actually uh, handed over uh, assignments in um, in paper on paper. Okay, so I actually had I started well. I I had a four eight six computer. Okay. I, Way before Pentium, okay, I had a 486. It was my first computer, and they and they felt it very, very uh, futuristic that I uh, gave back the translation in something which was uh, type typewritten <laughs> in the computer. So for me now, obviously, the challenge is exactly what Peter said. We have to embrace technology, and we need to make sure 
that we will work with it for our students and uh, for the future of obviously both us, uh, not just not just uh, our students, but society at large, because it, it's always a help, not an hindrance. So for me, it's quite clear that we work a lot with and alongside technology. Okay. So whatever is coming, I'm sure it will be good. Thank you. That was a perfect answer. <laughs> we have a couple of questions from the audience. Ready? So the first one would be, what kind of exercises could be done with the Sanako 1200 to help students improve pronunciation? I have an answer, but I'm going to let you to have your... Pedro, <laughs> well, well, would you? I... For I I I know that uh, that uh, Alexis has an answer because there are special features we don't we don't own the full uh, features of uh, the full well the extra features of uh, of Sanaco so I know that I will then give the floor to 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 Alexis to provide you with with more information but uh, our our the the working with pronunciation has to do with especially being able the students being able to record themselves and hear this themselves and we can provide feedback as well um, using uh, using sanako we can hear them and provide them feedback uh, Sanako can also be integrated with other tools, such as, um, for example, you can improve now with uh, with Office tools. Uh, still, uh, some features even in Office in Word, um, you can use them for for um, for improving pronunciation for students to train. And uh, the for me, the main advantage of using those tools, wh whatever language tool that you can imagine in a digital form, of course, I'm not talking about uh, on paper and uh, and using the the, the blackboard, but uh, any digital tool that you can imagine, it will always be useful in the study 1200 environment because you can get the features of the class management and you can add to, to them the recording and collecting. Uh, I didn't mention that, but the fact that you can collect all, all in terms of management, that's amazing. In terms of collecting the tools, the, the previous versions that we had of, uh, of Sanako Lab 300, for example, uh, wouldn't allow us to do that. So at the end of a, each um, exercise, students would have. I, I know I'm diverging. Uh, I'm diverging from the answer a little, uh, but um, uh, students would have to each student save their files, etc. It will. It would be a little bit more trickier to get all the files uh, in the same spot, etc. But now it works very good with uh, with uh, Study 1200. But specifically for pronunciation, my, my, my point is, uh, generally speaking about the tool, it is uh, all about recording and, and, and listening to yourself. Yeah, from my part, what I can tell you is that uh, our students, because they will be in, in, in during their undergraduate degrees, they will be actually doing a, a work placement of 800 hours, which corresponds more or less to a semester. For us, it is very important then they when they go on their work placement that they actually know how to speak to the to the customers. So the part of the pronunciation, as you can imagine, is quite in, important. So the fact that they can hear themselves is always is always uh, quite central to how they learn and how they evolve. Because typically they have the, this idea that oh I'm saying it right until they hear themselves. So the fact that it is so easy to actually record what they are saying and then now listen to you and see what you hear, and, and this is uh, we can we we know that this is one of the things that actually uh, draws their attention to well I have to improve. And typically, if they hear themselves, if it's not the the, the teacher or the colleague telling them oh that's not the way to say it, you should say it this way or the other way. It's it's always it's it always works better. Exactly. I was going to go for self-correction mm -hmm. as well, and specifically the model limitation activity, using it so that a teacher uh, provides the students with a model and the students record themselves, and then they have to listen back to their own recordings as well as the teacher. It's very easy to compare yourself when you hear the original as well but that's that's my favorite part of a language lab right there i think we're coming close to an end here there are no more open questions i would like to 
thank both Teresa and Pedro here. But before we log off, I have final slide to show you, to tell you what's going to happen next. So all the participants, please check your inbox for communication from Sonaco regarding the recording of the webinar and also information on upcoming webinars organized by Sonaco. And if you want to learn more about Sonaco Solutions, you can go to our website and reach out to your local reseller for updates on products and more product information. And you can always send us a direct email as well at info at sanako.com. Thank you, Pedro and Teresa. It was a very excellent Thanks. presentation. We're very happy to Thank have you, you here pleasure. today. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it was. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. We'll be ending the webinar right here. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye. -bye. Bye.